All right, hello everybody. Um, we're having another workshop today um, and Mukhtar is here to help with translation. Hello, I'm going to say that I'm going to have a workshop and I'm going to have a workshop. Um, so today we're going to talk a little bit about some just recap on food safety. I know a lot of you have already done those workshops, um, but I also just want to really show the new refrigeration that we have that you can use and the ice machine in the store and things like that. So this one will be a little bit more different. <laughs> So the first thing, I just want to show everybody all this stuff in the store. We're getting things set up a lot. Uh, make sure I can see here. So we got this new cooler. Um, this one's going to be for eggs and cheese and milk and yogurt and things like that. This one's going to be for these two are just for produce, vegetables. Here, so we can sell chicken and, and beef and different meats. And then more produce. These bins in the middle that we'll be able to uh, put food on, and then all these ones over here. We're going to have our little register over here. So you can take the registration of the registration and then we have um, also another thing too. We got a bunch of Make a little. Um, so if you need any seeds or anything, you can always come here and grab some. And then go through here. Um, so, the New Hampshire Food Bank gave us this walk-in. So, um, you still have to put it together and do some work. Um, but essentially, what I'll make it is that the newer walk-in that we had from last year in this back room that everybody set up, this is going to be able to be open for farmers to use. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you're like too far away from the phone. Uh, okay, yeah, maybe I'll get, try to do this. I'll get rid of the mask too. <laughs> uh, so, yeah. yeah, so the- Go ahead, food say, bank, say, 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 say it again about the food bank. Yeah, so the food bank, they got a grant for a new walk-in cooler. So the refrigeration guy that did that work told us that we could have their old one. So the food bank gave us a really big walk-in cooler. So our, our goal is that we'll use that cooler mostly for farm share and for food that goes into the store. But now the old cooler that not old, it's a new one from that we had installed last year. This one we're gonna allow. Um, we want farmers to be able to leave their food here. Um, so like if they go to harvest and they have a couple hours before a farmer's market, they can keep it cool rather than in their car. Um, or if they come back from market and have extra food, they can store it here. 
madama de fra hidrial ka mo o wala kasto la man ni ga de ne wala na o qodarti o batay o sishena ji fam share ka ji selo sasan kada ni me wala na fra hidrial ka de ni si fu ben ni si ji sta mala fra hidrial ka kalite quran bon ga bay ni me wala na sin be re ta ma ni chat la la su qodarti zero so we typically um, have um, that usually has a lock on it. Uh, there's a code. Um, so there's a key box on the outside. I can show you real quick. marka frider ko mara ne wala le secure da le o il po wala le secure ko lu ko frau marka banan ki al hege so we can give everyone the code so they it's a four number code they can punch it in and then the keys in there then they can unlock it so if they have markets on the weekend or anything they can come here and use the walk in as they need marka me wala na first secure da pin number ma le secure far number le ki yo pin number we yeah, so if, if people have, if, uh, if they pick food and they have a few hours before a market or after, they can leave it here or on the weekends if they have weekends off and um, they have orders for Monday and they want to pick on Sunday and just get the food here ahead of time, that's now available. Okay. Um, and what's really kind of most important about it is, especially for crops like cucumbers, squash, things that grow really quickly, rather than waiting until there's a specific harvest day to pick it, now you can pick it when it's ripe and ready and have a, a safe spot to keep it. Um, so naturally there are just a few rules around the walk-in cooler that I'll want to explain. Um, one is that all the boxes have to be labeled. That's really important. So we so people food don't get mixed up and we know um uh yeah, it just makes it so we know what's in the cooler and everything has to have a label on it. So if you bring a, a box in um, right near the cooler, there's this roll of labels. And this is what the labels look like. I know it's backwards. So there's a little marker hanging on the door. When you bring your food in, 
Um, it has the pick date on top. So you just write the date that you harvested it. Marca, marca de corto, uh, marca de corto. En que me cucoras de tarde o a la vez o por tu cucoras. And then this one here is the best buy date. So that's when, after a week, um, depending on what crop it is, if, it, if it's been here for over a week and it's starting to break down, then we're going to either donate, we'll reach out to you, but we'll either donate it or throw it out. Um, if it's like carrots or onions or things that store well, we'll we can talk about that. Okay. Okay. <laughs> So um, after you put the date that you picked it, you just write the vegetable, the crop that it is, your name, which is really important, and then what's in the box, the quantity. So if you have 24 heads of lettuce, you can write 24. Marka label and then there's a little box up here and it says um, okay to sell so what that means is if you have extra food that you want to harvest and bring here um, that we necessarily haven't ordered yet but it's extra and you want us to try to sell it you put an x in this box and then we know if we're low on something or if someone calls and wants a case of something we can go in and look for the boxes. If it says it's okay to sell, then we can try to sell it. Sorry. <laughs> That's it. And then when you're done, it's a sticker, so you can just peel it off and put it on your box or whatever, and you're good. Um, and then the last thing is just remember to lock the door. Um, that's, yeah, we want to make sure that, um, we keep that locked. So uh, it will take a little bit for people to get in the habit, but once we do it, it will, should all be a good. Okay, so that's the kind of the walking cooler part. Um, the next part is around the ice machine. So we got a grant, the same grant that got us 
a lot of the refrigeration in the front of the building got us um, this ice machine. Yeah, so those, um, the ice machine makes 350 pounds of ice a day. And uh, you, you can use this ice anytime you want uh, to keep your food cool and looking fresh. I Where did I go? Uh, maybe just your maybe your videos uh, block. Stop video section. What 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 do I have to go? Um, if you where go like in go your bottom thing? left corner, you should be able to. There should be like a little movie the screen or like a you know it looks like a camera next to your microphone. There you go. Yeah, I got it. Finally. Sure. <laughs> wow. Um. So yeah, so the ice machine, if you are going to go to the farm before you harvest, you can come get ice, then you can really chill your vegetables right after you pick them. And if you're going to be at the farm for a few hours, like lettuce or broccoli things that are going to get hit by the heat a lot, you can keep them in a cooler with ice to keep them fresh. Um, and then you can also use them at markets too. So the same, you know, if you go to a farmer's market with lettuce and you're there for three, four hours, by the end of the market, it's going to look very wilted and, um, and people won't look very appealing. People won't want to buy it. Um, but if you bring ice to the market, you can put it in bins uh, and put the product on top and, uh, and, and make it last longer. Um, I did look at some rules for farmers markets around ice and the only real rule that farmers have to do is they have to keep it in a cooler. It can't be a styrofoam, it has to be a cooler that can be washed. Um, so that's... Um, there's only really two kind of ass that we have uh, with the with this and it's mostly like the, the law one of them is you can only use an ice scoop in the ice machine so Hola, hola. Te cale te mana ay ay es que me chingas. Hola, le está mal carte aquí. Well, que la tal vez le quiero casar el que está mal. So it will be hanging right here, and um, yeah, so you can't put your hands in or anything. Just use this scoop and then put it back up there. Que no mana hola le está cale. Well, ganta me quiere carte. Cale la tal vez le o cada la malita no cada me con cale que está mal. And then the other important piece is if by accident something falls in there, uh, either food or anything, uh, it's no problem. Just let us know as soon as possible and we can uh, melt the ice and just make more ice. That's easy. But if there's like glass or metal or something that does fall in there and we don't take care of it, we could get someone really hurt and then we're a bit in trouble. <laughs> Uh, 
hati o lalawal o kaya lang katara man alayap ti wala sa maliti ko le sa king man lalat ti wala sa maliti di ano yun yun siya pati na nawala sa malat ti kawan ko sa katawang ano kung ano na baharwi ng kalalim wala sa maliti lalay wala lalat ti dito yu aman der lugar ati wong kita di o tos tama lo yun o mission para sa and um, so that's really it for like the new equipment and refrigeration. Um, it, I, like I said, I don't want to spend too much time on food safety since you all have done it a lot, but big reminders to obviously be washing your hands a lot and especially at markets until we can figure out this whole COVID thing, make sure you bring sanitizer and your mask and everything. the food safety is Pergalakan halas resmi sentul mara. Ini kalau itu memang lesen uktang oleh dari singkana kan? Mesin asusian nama rol bagam atau sesuatu yang mungkin tidak ada wab mask nama rol bersamal kan sukan itu boleh kan sanitizer yang bersamal kan. Walau nama rol belum tahan juga kesan kesan mesin kewan yang bersamal. Um, now we'll I want to quickly talk about some of the value added products that can be made in the kitchen here at Spruce. All good. You may still be muted, Osman. I can't hear you. Can you hear me? Yep, that's good. Um, yeah, so there's lots of products that can be made at the food hub uh, that you can sell at farmers markets or at the food hub or even to other stores. Okay, sorry about that. What were you saying? Is this a lot of work? Yeah, so there's a lot of value-added products that can be made um, by farmers if they're interested in this kitchen space that we have at the Food Hub that can be sold at farmers markets or at, through the Food Hub or to other stores. So the kitchen has a food license, um, but we don't have a license that allows cooking yet. But there's a lot of products that can be made that don't require cooking, and I'll talk about a couple of those. Um, people really like to eat ready to eat or really love the ready to eat foods and those types of foods often offer a higher profit margin uh, than other types of products so for example coffee you go to the store you can buy a pound of coffee for five dollars but if you sell one cup of coffee, you can get two dollars. So it shows, um, you know, you sell only three coffees, you've already made a dollar with that five dollars. How many cups can you really make with a whole pound? Lots and lots. So it shows that if you put the effort to prepare something, people will pay a higher value to it. <laughs> One pound coffee is good. Ten dollar a month is good. And the market is good. It's 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 good.
So, you know, these types of products will allow you to diversify what you're, uh, all the different things that you're, that you're selling. They'll also make it so if there, you have extra of certain types of food items or it's not so good quality, you can then turn it into something that is worth buying. And it, it will give you the chance to have some cash flow in the winter. If you have a product that's stable that you can sell in the off season, then you can make some cash in the winter. So here are some quick products that can be made uh, right here at Spruce. Um, you can make salads, you can make salsas. Yeah, you can make you can make uh, salads. You could make salsas. Go ahead. You could make pestos like basil pesto or garlic scape pesto. You could do cut fruit. Um, spice mixes. Um, you could make smoothies or popsicles or juices. Um, I think that is the majority of the things that I think on the top of my head that we could do here. But if you have other ideas of those types of uh, items that don't require cooking and you're interested in trying them out, please let us know. And if you don't want to make anything, but you still like the idea of turning excess produce into other products, you can work with other people to actually make the, the value added products. Uh, like the tomato sauce that you guys saw. Um, when we met a few weeks ago. That same company, they could make um, soups, they could make jams, relishes, pickles, uh, tons of different products. Soups, jams, you know, I'll call it um, so those are just a few ideas. If you are interested in any of that stuff um, or you'd like to try any of it, please let me know and um, I can certainly help you um, get set up and, um, and give it a try. Most of those things um, are very, very low cost entry to be able to start up. Um, so um, yeah, please let me know if you want to try any of these things. And that's really it. Um, I hope that um, I hope this was somewhat helpful, and I hope that we can get together either next week, um, and we can really I can show you all this stuff in person and um and really start talking about your planting plans and where you guys are all at 
Um, as Anthony said, and we've mentioned the CSA starts uh, at the end of the month. So the sooner that you all could get um, food that's ready to go, uh, the, the more opportunity that you'll have. We have uh, 100 customers signed up already uh, for the spring and the summer. We're shooting for around 250 members. Um, so it's going to be a busier year than last year, and uh, we're really looking forward to it. That's it, Osmond. Thank you. Yeah, I'll talk to you later. Okay.